We're alive. <laughs> We're live for episode number two of the Body Whispering Book Club. Yay. Welcome to the Body Whispering Book Club. <laughs> Thank you, Dane, for talking with us. And um, today's topic is letting go of judgment. And I'm, we are a bit late. We had some technical difficulties to work out. So we'll give chat a moment so the translators and everyone yeah, don't, behind us. Don't judge us because we're technically incompetent. <laughs> see what I did far there? From, you see I would say you are far from technically incompetent. It just takes a while to set up <laughs> streaming in three places, you know? I know. And I'm always at the last moment. You know, I always figure it'll work out, but then I'm three minutes late to my own party. Oh, well. <laughs> so if you guys didn't look, we, this is the second um, of the book club series for Body Whispering, and there will be a third next week. And in the first episode, um, the title topic was energy and relearning your first language. Today is letting go of judgment, although we talked a lot about judgment. <laughs> we last, sure did. In the last uh, Boy, slide. did we. But I wanted to um, get your book ready because I'm going to ask you to read a little bit. But as I was, yeah. mm -hmm. this one. <laughs> this book. If you have it at home, you can follow along. Oh, there's all the comments. Hello, everybody. I was on the wrong thing. I couldn't. Oh, see yeah, you were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but OK, so one of the books in the chapter, one of the chapters in the book is called Letting Go of Judgment. And in there you say, and there's a couple of brilliant quotes I want to like wrote down, but you say that almost all disease, hurt and pain in bodies is based on judgment. Yeah. Which is you know, last time we had a lot of people asking questions about different body stuff and diseases and things like this. So, so there is the whole book is wonderful, but I, I'd love you to read at page 71, the very bottom of the page where it starts with, I've said this already, and then read yeah. through to like the middle of the next page. Ish. Okay. So I can do that. Start. Okay. Cause I like hearing you read it, your own book. <sighs> I, this book makes me cry. I just, it's just, it has that energy to it. You know, it acknowledges what is in such a way. Here we yeah. go. I've said this already and I'll say it again. Judgment is a killer. It's a killer of possibilities. It's a killer of space. It's a killer of energy. It's a killer of joy. It's a killer of happiness. Moreover, it's the number one cause of pain, suffering and illness on the planet. As a body whisperer, Understanding more about judgment and its destructive and limiting nature puts you in a place where I believe hardly any other healers on the planet are right now, and a place where you can bring change into your own world and the world of the people you work on with true ease. The thing about judgment is that it's an ingrained habit, and it's no one's fault that they picked it up. It's almost like a reflex. We've been conditioned to judge everything about us, everything we think, everything we choose, everything we do is labeled as good or bad, right or wrong. What if it didn't have to be that way? What if it's not the way you truly are underneath all the conditioning? What if dropping judgment altogether would be like a homecoming and a return to your true nature, almost like getting your wings back? Hmm. <laughs> Let's take a moment for tears. <laughs> know, right? you know, the thing about this is the, the beauty of this uh, the beauty of this from my point of view is we acknowledge that and and it's put in such a way that we can all acknowledge that but then the beauty of it is walking through to living beyond it which is really what the book does amongst many other things because with each of these spaces that's available or with each of these things that we talk about that may be a limitation for somebody the whole reason we're bringing up that conversation is because the space of your being that you can be with your body is beyond that. And that's where the magic starts to occur. And, and all of these elements that we talk about that are the limitations, because we talk about limitations only to undo the limitations so you can have the possibilities. And those are some of the most, the things that are discussed in the book, like judgment, are some of the most dynamic fundamentals of limitation that people don't even realize that they're living with. They don't even, it wouldn't even occur to them that, oh, this is a limitation. It's like, 
yeah, this, this, and yeah. Well, I agree. <laughs> this is the book we should have been given when we first created our bodies. Absolutely. And yeah, and it's like you said with judgment. I know when I first heard the a bit of the judgment conversation, I was one of those who didn't quite under, understand that it was everywhere in my life or get how dynamically I was I was doing it. And what I love about that passage you just read is this gentleness of it's okay. It's like a reflex. We've all learned to be this way. And then you so beautifully, like you mentioned, walk through all of these different ways to be with it. Can can you start with a bit of of talking about the energy of judgment? Because last time we talked about your body speaks in energy. A lot of us um, haven't been listening or need a little like to play with starting to listen to your best friend. And you talk in this chapter about how an energy of judgment then solidifies and solidifies into, oh, all of a sudden I have a frozen shoulder or my back is out because that the, how the whispers get louder. Can you talk just a little bit about the energy of judgment? Well, if we look at it, so our body communicates with these whispers and it's really a beautiful experience. And, and also in the book, I walk you through getting a lot more of that, you know, in all these different ways, but that's such a beautiful experience that it's like kind of like what we get when we're around really sweet animals and, you know, little babies and that, where it's just like, oh, it's like, ha, it just is. And so what judgment does is it creates a wall in a wall between you and that experience of your body. And it's a, if we, if we also think of judgment as fixed point of view, for example, and conclusion, and, and we pick up, and here's the thing is we pick up all of those energetically. So, we're picking those up energetically, but they are not the soft, kind, beautiful, flowing energy that our bodies are and that we are. They are an aberration of what we are not and what we don't have to be with our bodies or in our lives. And yet we adopt them as more substantial than the whisper of the lightness with which we and our bodies naturally communicate. It's kind of like, you know, uh, the name of the book is body whispering for a reason. And what we have is if it's very challenging to hear the whisper when you're at a rock concert, for example, there's so much intensity and there's so much loudness, which is what judgment is. And the conclusions that we come to they're they're, they're solid and loud. They're like a broadcasting of a, a loud solidity that is so loud that unless we're willing to be very present and explore differently and allow our body's innate capacity to be valuable to us and look for it, we lose the whisper of the greatness of our body's communication, or I should say the greatness of the whisper of our body's communication, because there is a greatness in that and there's a fluidity in that that allows change. And so here we are, it's like, if you could imagine um, building a house, let's say you, you get to design your dream home. And let's say you're, here you are, you're 15 years old and you're designing your dream home for some reason. And so you create this dream home and now it's like, you know, and here you are, you get to 30, you've been living in what was your dream home when you were 15, you know, and the, the posters on the wall and the purple and the black that you were so into when you were 15 and the, the tiny rooms and the, you know, the very inelegant furniture and all that stuff and all the, you're like, oh my God. And here you are living in this house. Well, when you function from judgment, you're now living in this house and you've solidified it as the only choice for you. But if you could consider the magical possibility of the fluidity of listening to and functioning from the whispers beyond judgment, you could perceive that house as it is and go, well, is this actually enough for me now? Is this actually working for me now? 
would I like something different? And from the fluidity, you could now choose if you could, and this is, this is interesting because it sounds like an insane concept that I'm talking about, but it's equally as instructive in how we are and can be with our bodies. Because if you could imagine somehow magically being able to transform the dream house you had when you were 15 into the current dream house that you have, let's say at 30, by desolidifying what it was at 15, by desolidifying all the fixed points of view and the necessity of what you desired and required then that you decided was gonna make everything work. And instead, allow the spaciousness of this house to rearrange itself to what you would really like as your dream house now, whoa. And you would realize there would be a space that would be so different than what you created when you were a teenager, for example, which is also so very true of us in our bodies. And there would be a something that would be honoring and nurturing of you now, probably a lot more space, probably more muted colors, probably a lot more elegant furniture, probably a lot more, uh, a lot better food, probably a lot better cooking utensils, you know, like everything would get an upgrade that would work so much better for your living. And then, so if you can consider that possibility in a very real sense, that's what is the invitation and the availability for what we can be and do with our bodies by embracing this, these concepts, if you will, and the, this different way of being with it, that body whispering allows us. And then also, Let's, here you are, let's say you get to 35 and now you're like, wait, I would like something different. And now you can change it again. But let's look at this also is the other thing that occurs as you embrace body whispering and this space and energy with our bodies is each day as something different becomes possible, you now allow it to shift to what else is possible today that wasn't possible yesterday. And you interact with your body from what is possible today that wasn't possible yesterday. And it becomes a continuously moving, changing invitation and space of possibilities so that you don't find yourself 10, 20, 30, 50, 60 years in going, Jesus, I hate what I've created. Instead, every day you're present with creating it every day. Wow. And that's so beautiful. And I, I love that you're talking about this change through fluidity, because one of the things you mentioned in the book that I was going to ask about um, is this con concept of we often create the other way. So you look in the mirror and you judge your wrinkles or your tummy or whatever it is. And you're because that's so solid, your body goes, oh, that must be what you want. And I would love you to talk. So as you explain, well, the fluidity is a different way to be. We're so practiced almost in the other way, like again, a reflex. Yeah. Um, yeah, how how do you begin? Like what's what are some ways you can play with like every day, that fluidity and getting out of the reflex of the solidity of, of judgment? Well, this is exactly the thing is you wanna practice and you wanna play, which is is also a different way of going about living that our bodies can invite us to and show us what is possible through that. And so it's like, you could just ask a really simple question. I'm a big fan of questions. And I've been listening to this book called How to Think Like Da Vinci. And, and it makes me cry because he was talking about this, you know, in the late 1400s, what, which his whole point of view was question everything, be the question, you know? And I'm like, hey, you know, here we are access consciousness, Da Vinci upgrade for the 2000s, you know, which is ask more questions, come to fewer conclusions and let the possibilities present themselves. So you could ask a question like, what would it be like to play with my body? And what would it be like, what would play be as the creation of my body? And what would it be to create my body through play? And, and also, what value is this judgment serving? You know, and a lot of people don't realize when they do judgment, they're just, once again, they're so conditioned to it, like I put in the book. But judgment is where you have less connection, less of that sense of that space, that ease, that fluidity, that lightness, the beauty, less of the sense of the beauty of your body and you, the being, 
And also it's where um, it's got sort of a heaviness to it. It's got like a contracted, you know, you look at your eye wrinkles and rather than going, wow, I have smiled a lot in my life. You know, you go, oh yeah, when can I get Botox or whatever it is that we come to as a conclusion. Because so many of these things that are done in the world right now are a solution to a problem for which the problem only exists because of our judgments. That, because Jyoti just put in here, what can we ask when we feel something is wrong um, with our body or when we are communicating with our body? And as yeah. you're talking about this play and the spaciousness of that versus the aiming for perfection, which is mostly what a lot of us do with our bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, that's a great thing. What question can I ask? What about, what if this judgment weren't valid? What if this judgment had no validity? And where did I buy that it did? And you'll recognize where you bought it because we do so many things with our judgmental points of view of our bodies that resemble points of view that we grew up with. And if you can just be the question of the judgment, because the question undoes the absolute of the judgment. Meaning if you can be the question, what would it be like if this judgment had no validity and does this judgment actually have validity? That's an interrupt right there because the entire idea of judgment is this is valid, this is real. This is the only valid reality. And so asking a question like that shortcuts it and allows a, a it kind of like what it does, it like slices it a little bit and allows space for your awareness to jump in to that solid block that you're functioning from. And once your awareness jumps in, your body then goes, oh, I can participate in this because your body can't participate in a constructive way with judgment other than to manifest your judgment. That's what it does. But if you ask a question, it creates a chink in the solidity, the chink in the armor, because your body is, is trying to create itself based on the armor of your judgments. And judgment is just like armor. It constricts you and makes sure nothing that doesn't match the curvature of the armor can exist or the structure of the armor. And so you open this little thing, your awareness now comes in and you are now actively choosing something different. And from that active choice for something different by asking a question like that, your awareness comes in because that is actually the nature of the universe, is actually total awareness, which is also total consciousness, which is why we do this stuff called access consciousness. Because when you function from consciousness and awareness, the difficulties in your life go away and the magic shows up to play. And so now your awareness comes in and now your body can actively participate in creating something different and in changing what was previously unchangeable. Wow. You, you have a quote in the book that it's, you say, it's your willingness to let go of judgment. That's the catalyst for life changing greatness, greatness. Yes. And so can, can you talk about that? I love how you're talking about the question creates like a chink in the judgment. So there's space. Can you speak a bit more about questions and the difference between uh, like what's good, like <laughs> almost a question with judgment, like, buddy, what are you doing? Or how do I get rid of this X problem versus a question? Because yeah. they yeah. seem like, I mean, they might have a question mark on them. Yeah. See, you want to start to notice when your question creates more lightness. That's when you'll know you're asking a real question that is coming from no point of view of what you're trying to overcome. And, and see, I, my point of view is ask for anything you truly desire. Even if it seems like it's uh, you're trying to overcome a problem, because why not ask for what you truly desire? A lot of people are like, oh, I shouldn't ask to have a nicer butt. I'm like, why not? But what you want to recognize is to the extent that you have a judgment about your current butt, you will eliminate your ability to have the butt you truly desire. So if you want a nicer butt, 
ask for it. Hey, but what you do is you just open-endedly say, hey, body, what would it take to have a butt that I really like? But then the other thing you need to ask is body, what kind of butt would you like? And your body's answer is going to be one where your head is no longer in it, idiot. But that's a story <laughs> for another time. Okay. Um, and if your head is going to stay up your butt, you should probably ask for a glass stomach so you can at least see where you're going. Anyway, I digress. Okay. So what you want to do, so it's okay to ask for that, but notice when you're asking for it from, I have a need of this to like myself or like my body, or I have a need of this so other people will like me or like my body, or I have a need of this so other people will see me sexy and have sex with me and eventually have relationship with me and eventually solve my life. Okay, now everything that brought up, right and wrong, good and bad, bot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And if you don't know what that is, you go to theclearingstatement.com. That is called The Clearing Statement. And it's basically the biggest upgrade in personal development since there has been personal development. And it is crucial if you truly desire to change things as a tool for creating change. It takes 20 minutes to explain. There's a video at theclearingstatement.com. Please go there if you did not understand it, because I'm not going to take 20 minutes today to explain something that already has a video and a website just for you. Okay, so but look at this for a moment, right? That scenario I just gave. Here's the other thing that is so interesting that people don't realize is they will, in their mind, what they really got is a, a totally different outcome, a totally different goal in mind. And I say goal on purpose because it is a goal they're trying to achieve. So what they're, and, and so just look at how brilliant this is while you also have an appreciation for how totally insane it is and how much it cuts you off from awareness. So if we look at this for a moment, the person's end goal may be to have a relationship, which their goal for having the relationship is to have somebody take care of them and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And so what they do is they look at their problems, the things that are judgeable about them and they assume that if they can eliminate that problem, then they will have this other thing they're asking for without ever really acknowledging that that's what they actually desire. So they're really saying, hey, I'd like a nicer butt because their point of view is it's because of my butt that I don't have the relationship that will solve my life's problems for me. What? That's like that, that what? But I cannot tell you the number of times somebody well, if they actually explore this, they'll find why if they start asking what's actually underneath this that I'm not acknowledging, which is another great question. Is it mine, which is another great question, or who does this belong to, which is another great question across the board. They start to realize that they what they thought was a judgment of their body is actually a has a purpose that is in a totally different direction. Yeah. So what you could ask is, um, what is the purpose of this judgment? What am I hoping to accomplish from this judgment? But also we've really got to go back to, is this judgment even mine or is it something that I picked up from somebody else along the way? And so there, but all of this, this is the beauty of the exploration. See, this is the other thing that I really encourage in the book and in my life and in access in general, and I realize I haven't spoken about it nearly enough because most people want the answer. Dr. Jane, I want a different butt. Tell me how. And I'm like, well, okay, I, I, I think you should have everything you desire personally. But in actuality, if you go on this exploration, like this one thing, this is one of the ways in which our body is such an amazing gift of awareness for us because it physically actualizes the things that are based on all of our points of view that we don't even know we have. So let's say you're like, okay, I'd like a better butt, whatever that is for you. And you start exploring and go, is this even, is this mine? Oh no, it's not even mine. I, I actually kind of like my butt now that I look in the mirror. Um, okay, that might change it. Or what is the purpose of this judgment? Well, to make me a better butt. Okay, so for what reason would I like a better butt? Oh, so people will like me more. Okay, so what reason would I like people to like me more? Oh, so people won't be in judgment of me so I can feel better about myself. Okay, cool. And what other reason would I like people to like me more? 
Oh, because then um, I can find somebody who really likes me and have a relationship. Oh, well, for what reason do I desire that relationship? Oh, so I can have all the things a relationship is supposed to give me. Oh, what for what reason do I desire all those things? Oh, because I realize I'm not willing to provide it for myself. Oh, shit. Now your butt has just given you awareness of fundamental points of view about your life if you're willing to ask enough questions. And what's funny is your butt has all that information. What? <laughs> Okay, so do the wrinkles, so do the, you know, turkey neck or crab face or crab claws or whatever the hell, you know, you know, and booby size and penis size and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And um, from a different space, which is why the whispering part of this is a vital part of this, from a different space that can be perceived and explored. And here's the thing. Once again, this is called access consciousness because you getting those awarenesses is you getting more conscious. You getting those awarenesses now allows you to see what actually is underneath the surface and what's really pulling the strings. And it's the space from which you can finally perceive the people behind the curtain that are putting on the show that everybody sees called your life and your body. And then changing it is not at all what you thought it was. Changing it is actually getting in touch with those points of view and seeing, do I truly desire to function from this as my reality? Is this really enough for me? Is this really good enough for me? Is this really um, creating the life I desire? And from that search, from that journey, you start to then go on the journey of creating the life that you desire. And what happens is your body changes as if by magic. Hmm. That this is so beautiful. You're, this is so beautiful. I just want to say thank you for the way you're speaking about everything. Um, thank you. Can so with that space, I love what you just asked. Like, is this really good enough for me? Is this how I'd like to create my life? And your butt example is very wonderful. The way you walk us through, actually. Okay, this is what's underneath all that. And the last time we chatted in the first Zoom, we talked a little bit about social media. Um, and I'd love to talk about the volume that we hear things on. So as we all scroll through social media and the whole idea is here's a perfect image, whether it's actually a physical body or the life that looks perfect. And so the volume of that as judgment is so loud versus what you're speaking about are these like questions and fluidity to start getting in there. Um, to change that, how how do we st start to ask or have a bit more awareness of, of, yes, this is what's being presented to me, but what do I actually desire? Is it just question? Are there other things we can play with? So many things to play with. Um, <laughs> and, and that's the thing about it. Here's so many of these concepts people inherently know and if you ask them a question, they actually have the awareness. And yet at the same time, so much of it seems, seems so hidden because we have been functioning not as these beings that know, but from these needy creatures that have massive needs of all kinds of things working out um, and in all kinds of other ways. So what we need to recognize, first we need to be kind to ourselves and realize you are not doing anything wrong. You are not wrong. I'm going to say that again in English. Hopefully it's translated in all these languages. You are not wrong. You have been doing the best damn job with your body that you can, and you do the best job with the tools you have available. It's just, we've never really been given appropriate tools for a magical body. And so now we are part of the front wave of discovering and uncovering that. So there are gonna be hiccups along the way and that's okay. But there's a different space when you realize that your body is actually magical. And don't tell 99.9% .9 of people because they won't get it. And they'll look at you like you're a freak. Like I was being interviewed the other day by this guy and he couldn't get 99% of what I said. And you could just see him spacing out during the thing. And I realized, wow, not only him, but most of the people that listen to him are not gonna be able to hear this conversation. And what was funny is it could have been a great conversation, but it couldn't be heard. 
And that's sort of where we've tried to put ourselves is in a place of more normal. And if everybody else has this going on and we, and we can perceive what's going on for everybody else energetically, then we must need to have that going on too. We must need to change things the way other people do. Who am I to be magical? Who am I to be different? Who am I to be miraculous? My question is, who are you not to be? And the only reason you feel wrong so much of the time is because you don't match this reality. You do not fit any of the currently prescribed holes with, in which you're supposed to put your head. You know, you were the multi-sided dodecahedron that is trying to fit into a square hole. You're not the round peg in a square hole. You're the multi-sided dodecahedron that is trying to shove your head into a square hole. So it's partially the acknowledgement of that that allows us to, to, in effect, perceive and receive a different space of being which allows us then to start to have this, this fluid, um, ease-filled, spacious communication with our bodies, and which spills over into every area of our lives. So how do you get there? You start by asking any question that you can think of that seems light at the time. And like, what else is possible that I've never considered? Body, what are the infinite possibilities for you and me together? Body, what would it take to change this? Hey, and um, what would it take to have a miracle in changing this? And what would it take to actually live miraculously with you, body? And all of my points of view that don't allow it, destroy and uncreate it, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shorts, boys and beyond. Body, how cool are you that I've never acknowledged? How yummy are you that I've been trying to cut off so I could fit in with normal idiots? How um, orgasmic are you that we've been judged for so we cut off? Like any question that makes you have a sense of this rather than this. And, and, you know, I've just given you in the course of this, you know, Facebook live, you've gotten, I don't know, 20 or 30 questions yeah. already. And a lot of you are like, but give me the right question. That's the problem. There is no right question. There's only the question that you can come up with or that you can, that there's only the question that will work based on you and your body and the energy of the moment. And, but open-ended questions like that, what else is possible I've never considered? And what is possible for me and my body that I think is not possible, that if I allowed the possibilities would actualize a different reality. And, and from that place, you start to notice anytime you ask a question like that, like even while I'm asking on this Facebook Live, a lot of you might notice that you're like, ooh, I'm getting lighter. Well, yeah, that's how it works. You do get lighter in the presence of an actual question. And so what an amazing gift to be able to have this and then start recognizing when you get lighter and, and ask more questions around that. Okay, so let's say somebody's got, um, uh, I don't know, let, let, I'm gonna, I'm, this is a comment from a while ago that I'm gonna post because okay. I, I I don't know if it exactly, uh, we're going in a slightly different direction, but it's something I wanna talk about and I may be able to find a way to blend them together. Could you talk a little bit about taking over other people's judgments about their bodies? I work on massage there. I work as a massage therapist and I started to burn out. Well, here's the thing is a lot of you are actually healers and your body will naturally take on any limited judgment or point of view that a body around it functions from. And so you can ask yourself, who does this belong to? Is this mine? Which also for any limited point of view, for any limited point of view we notice we have or any, um, any pain, anything that isn't working for us, that is smaller than us or less than we would like to be with us or our bodies, we can ask, who does this belong to? Is this actually mine? Or am I trying, ask that. And then if you get a no, it's not yours, you go, am I trying to heal someone else? and how many other people, if it relates to our bodies. So that's another question that you want to ask in this questioning realm. You know, let's say we're talking about your turkey neck or your wrinkles or whatever, um, or your, you know, your belly that's a little bigger than you want. You could ask one of the other questions you want to ask in addition to, you can ask, what is it? What do I do with it? Can I change it? If so, how do I change it? What else is possible that I've never considered? What would it take for this to change miraculously? And body, what can I do and be that will allow this to change? But then you also want to add in there, is this mine? And body, is this ours? 
and your body will go, um, no, I'm, I'm getting fat for your mom. And you're like, why are you getting fat for mom? Like I was around somebody uh, a couple days ago who, who like doesn't really listen to his body and doesn't really eat well and was, you know, kind of like getting a little thick around the middle. And um, I noticed my body feeling thick around the middle. And I'm like, body, who does this belong to? And my body just kind of gave me a, this energy of this guy. And I was like, why are you doing that? You know? <laughs> and my body's like, I was just letting you know what was going on. This is where he's functioning. And you asked to know more about him so you could contribute to him. And I'm showing you more about him. And I was like, thank you, body. Can we let go of the pooch, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I did it. I just went, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And my body was like, you're welcome. Okay. And it started changing. But that like yeah. that. And here's the other thing is with talking about some of these things and the ease with which they can change. Two things. Number one, the way of getting there is not at all the way you thought it was going to be. Trust me on that one. I know this because in being the one exploring these tools on this journey for so long, it never was what I thought it was going to be that actually worked. Okay, so that's first. Number two, a lot of you might think I'm crazy for even suggesting that this is possible and that this will actually work and whatever. And it's cool. Try it or don't. It's your body. It's your life. It's your choice. If you want to go to have somebody cut out your fat instead of asking your body and changing it on your own, and that works better for you, good for you. I don't have a problem with that. It's your life. You know what works for you. I'm just being willing to put myself out here on the line as a total friggin' weirdo because I found that that's where the magic in life is, and that's what I'm more interested in. And I don't really care about people's judgments at this point in my life. It's like... Um, what I've noticed continuously, and maybe some of you have noticed this also, and I'm really saying this for you guys because I don't need to say that I don't care about judgments because I just don't care about them and you don't need to say it when you're living there. Okay, but what I've noticed is that every single time the people that judge and maintain judgment are not happy. They're not creative. They're not light. They're not gifting to anybody except what they consider the gift of their fixed point of view at and against other people. And I don't have a need to pay credence to those people. I don't have a need to believe that because they're judging me for something, that there must be validity in that judgment. Now, for my whole life, up until a few years ago, I did. And when somebody would judge me or judge my body, I would go, oh, there must be something to it because it's got such an intense energy. As I started communicating with my body more, I started realizing, oh, the fact that it's such an intense energy means it's actually not real and true for me and my body because the only intensity that my body have that's real and true are joy and orgasm or orgasmic energy. Everything that brought up for everybody. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. I love it because I get to go all over the map on these things. And a lot of people probably have, you know, like, oh, he's going to go here. Or, oh, I think it'll be this. Nope. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be whatever your bodies are telling me to tell you. So that's what I'm functioning from. Well, I love, you've said before, when you talk about your body with the tummy, like tell, just giving you information about this other man, you've talked before, I think you gave the analogy of it, your body being like cat whiskers, where their function is to like tell you about the world around you and what's going on. And with a cat, you see that, of course their whiskers do that. And it is such a different way of looking at the body. Like that's just, it's doing this wonderful, it's sweet job of just giving you information of all that's yeah. around you which is also so much lighter than body. What are you doing? Or why is this showing right? as X, Y, or Z? This is wrong. It's like, Oh, thank you. Yeah. Can you talk? I about love, yeah. Well, yeah I, love, I love the energy with which you present that, you know, it's just, it's doing its beautiful, sweet job of giving you information and also trying to heal the people that you took on a point of view that you wanted to heal. This was you. And now you're blaming your sweet body. But if you do that, if you have that energy, exactly as Emily presented it. Oh, you're doing such a good job, sweet body. You know, you're just being this sweet thing of doing your job. Thank you. And people ask, okay, so I'm doing this thing for somebody else. How do I get rid of it? You go, well, okay, so all of my commitments, oaths, vows, fealties, commilties, swearings, and promises to heal them. And whatever, and from any lifetime, including this one or another, destroy and uncreate it if you're willing to. And notice if you have resistance to doing that, 
If you don't have resistance, just go, well, even if you do, just go destroy and uncreate it, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. And if you do have resistance, you wanna ask yourself, hey, everything, all of my resistance to letting this go and all of my necessity of holding on to this, destroy and uncreate all that, pock and pot, or the whole clearing statement. And in so doing, you'll start to change that place where it's a necessity for you to do and a necessity for your body to be the effect of. Wow. <laughs> As you're talking, Jen Tootin just put in there, I just became aware that I made my body bigger just to make others around me more comfortable. Yeah. How, <laughs> how much do we <laughs> choose things with our body to make others like that thing you were saying before about being normal and not being the miraculous, magical body and beings, you know, that we are. Yeah. And not standing out. Because here's the thing, when you're, you know, the the quote unquote sexy one, whatever that is between you and the circle of people you know, you get a lot of attention and a lot of it is unwanted. And also you'll do it and and see certain people thrive on that energy. And most of the people watching this don't. Okay. There are many people, uh, uh, let me think. Oh, the Kardashians, okay? <laughs> and talk about a girl who has no judgment of a really big butt. Are you kidding me? I love it though, because she's like, big butts are awesome, you know? And you know, it's like, you could get butt implants to have a butt as large as mine. And I love that on the one hand, because it's so cool because it made big butts okay. Because <laughs> your butt is your butt. And why shouldn't you enjoy your butt? And here's the other thing is there's an ass for every seat. Okay. Meaning no matter what your body looks like, there is somebody out there who will lust after it. And if you start to recognize that you'll stop rejecting the people that could lust after it because you want to maintain the judgment that you're not lustable. Okay. Most people have a type that is not wrong. And there are lots of people who like bigger bodies. There are lots of people who like bigger butts. There are lots of people who like petite bodies. There are lots of people who like tall, skinny bodies. There, everybody, there's all kinds of people who like all kinds of different bodies. So anyway, now that I said that, um, that thing about making your body bigger is also so that you don't intimidate other people. So you can feel like the maybe the good person rather than a bad person or the good friend rather than the one who will steal their man or the good this, so note it, the, whenever you go to say the word good, that's a judgment basically, okay? So how many judgments are you using to not be the over the top powerhouse you could be choosing? Everything that is, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shirts, boys and beyonds. And so you recognize that and you recognize that people do that all the time. And if you have a natural capacity with ease in your life, you'll stop it. If you have a natural capacity with ease in your body, if you're one of these people who can eat, I don't know, you know, you could eat 12 meals a day and still not gain weight or, you know, eat cartons of ice cream and still not gain weight. Well, that's a gift. But here's the thing. Don't bother telling anybody because when they get envious of you, you'll turn it off. So remember, just for me, just for fun, never tell anyone. Like I have a capacity. I used to, when I really enjoyed drinking alcohol, I would go out to lunch, I would order two to three alcoholic drinks in addition to a Coke, usually. Um, and I would have those drinks refilled between two and three, sometimes four times at lunch. And so sometimes I would have six to eight, sometimes as many as 10 drinks at lunch <laughs> and be just fine. And when I say just fine, I mean, I knew I was tipsy, but I could carry on a conversation. I could facilitate dynamically. And, you know, I tell people that and they're like, you're crazy, you were not. I'm like, I'll send you some audios if you wanna hear some brilliant friggin' facilitation by a guy who had 10 drinks at lunch, you know? And what's funny is I don't do that very much anymore, darn it, because it was so much fun. But anyway, um, I'm bringing that up. And I know there are certain people out there that would go, that's not possible, you're an alcoholic. I'm like, oh, you have no idea what's possible. And, and this is where the awareness of being different comes in. Because if you'll, if you'll do and be something that is so different with your body, you are duty bound to believe there's something wrong with you. 
And you're, you're duty bound to try to make that come back and fit underneath the bell curve when you're not even on the piece of paper that the curve is printed on. And rather than that, what I would suggest and what I would ask of us is to be willing to be so far beyond the curve that we're not even on the paper that the curve is printed on and embrace those things, but do not tell people because if you tell them, you will kill it because you will perceive energetically in their world whether they can have it or not. And 99.99999% of people will not get it in the way you do. And if you can't make it match somebody else's reality, based on the definition of reality, which is where two or more people align and agree on a point of view, if you can't make it match their reality, you will assume it can't be real for you and you will eliminate it. So everywhere you've done that with your miraculous, literally off the page capacities, everything you've done to limit or kill your miraculousness, and everywhere you're trying to be normal, average, real, and the same as everybody else, and plump up around other people, or not have the capacities to eat and drink whatever the hell you want, or not need to eat and drink at all and still be fine, or not need to sleep and still be fine, we you destroy and then create it all, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, bot and pock, all nine shorts, boys, and beyond. There's this one girl I know that after each of her three, two, three, I don't know how many kids she had, but after each of her pregnancies, she was in her skinny jeans within a week or two weeks at the most. And she sleeps, you know, four to six hours a night and pretty much, um, you know, eats in that. But she's like, and she had this awareness that water was healing when she was a teenager. And so she drinks water to heal herself. Now, that's not supposed to be possible. Um, <laughs> somebody's doing it. How is it not possible? You but know, that's so, what I love, Dane, because you're giving these examples of in this reality, there's always, there's a this reality version of why it's not possible or an explanation of, oh, well you do that because you have a high metabolism. Like there's yeah. <laughs> like either way, there's some this reality that's why you can't or that's why it's showing up the way it is rather than the magic you are. Cause people are very worried that you're not drinking anymore. Or you have like, <laughs> I'm like, it's so funny. What if what's fun for you one day or the next isn't, but isn't that interesting? We want to find a reason for something why we are or we're not with our body. Totally. And we want to we want to put everything into a box so that we can understand it or believing that if we put somebody else's miraculousness into a box, then maybe we can find out how to be miraculous if we define it enough. Except once you define it, you've killed it. So you basically have one of two choices. You can either function from and live as a miraculous embodiment and you can function from and live from a miraculous reality. Or you can function from and live from the mundane, judgmental, boring, this reality that none of us like anyway. I like up the, <laughs> the more fun option. <laughs> yeah, I'd like number one, please. Well, it's totally. so simple. And you talk in the book, you know, towards this end of this chapter on judgment, you talk about these, which you've brought up all throughout this Zoom of ways to get out of judgment. But one of the things you dynamically speak about is, is interesting point of view and just that your point of view creates your reality. So if you have the point of view, you can have all this miraculousness with your body. That's what shows up. Exactly. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> but that would be too easy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the other part is that's the other thing that I – I give people a thread of following is progressively with all these conversations and the invitations is, is to get them to embrace ease as okay and possible and what actually creates, which is the other weird part because with the shout that that solidity of judgment functions as, it's like a shout on the one hand and it's an exclusion of whisper on the other. It's like this dark thing. But with that, what gets excluded is the ease that we and our bodies naturally are in changing, in generating, in healing, in enjoying, in actualizing differently. And like one of the things that I've had the capacity for, and I actually would do it, but I never really acknowledged it until mm -hmm. Gary pointed it out, was I can literally grow four inches and shrink four inches without moving a muscle 
instantaneously. And I noticed this in class sometimes, like I would be standing up facilitating and literally, because if, if you don't know it, if you step up four inches, the floor looks dynamically further away. And, you know, and so I would be standing here and it was like my perspective changed on the floor. And I was like, what happened? And somebody in class pointed out, they're like, did you just grow? Like your eye line was here with that line behind you in the in the room. And now it's here. And I was like, yes, but you're not supposed to notice because if anybody noticed, I would make it go away. Well, we started talking about it in classes and I haven't noticed it very much since. I've noticed that I can contract my body, but, and the way I got to the awareness was Gary and I would go to the gym and work out many years ago. And finally, after a couple of months of working out, he, he said to me one day when we walked into the gym and we're standing in the mirror looking at each other and Gary and I are normally basically roughly the same height. And, um, and I looked at in the mirror and he said to me, he said, did you used to work out with people who were taller than you? And I went, yeah, why? And I was looking at him in the mirror when we said this, and I'm so grateful. And what I noticed was my mouth was down under his chin. As soon as he said that, think our mouths and our heads were at the same height. <laughs> and I was like, dude, it is true. It does happen. And I was so just, I was like, wow, body, you are freaking amazing. Now, do I know how that happens? No. Would people think I'm crazy? Yes. And okay, fine. I would, you know, I'd probably think that too, if I hadn't heard it. There's so many stories of what people do and are capable of with their bodies that we discount because we can't logically figure out how. And if we can't logically figure out how, and this is what the world does. If you can't logically figure out how, which by the way, is a judgment that you have that if you can't figure out how, then it is somebody lying to you or it can't exist. And if you can't figure out how, then it's not real. Guess what? If you can't figure out how, you are correct. It is not real. It is miraculous, which is beyond real. That's mm -hmm. where I would invite people to go. And so part of the conversations that we're having where we talk about these basic things, which is where most people are stuck, is actually let's start there, acknowledge some changes possible, but then let's head to the miraculous. And miraculous can only occur beyond judgment. Miraculous and judgment do not go hand in hand. Miraculous and gratitude go hand in hand. Miraculous and joy go hand in hand. Miraculous and undefined go hand in hand, but not with judgment. Judgment eliminates gratitude. It eliminates joy. It eliminates lightness. And it creates a fixed point of view where you decide that you are right, even when you're deciding that you're right about how wrong you are. So judgment is truly the biggest killer there is. And when I mean judgment, I mean judgment about anything, right or wrong, good or bad. Conclusion about anything, because any for any conclusion or judgment or decision that you have about anything, nothing that doesn't match that conclusion, decision or judgment can come into your world. So this judgment thing that we do, anytime you go, oh, well, that can't exist or that can't happen, you are doing judgment. What if it could? But also what you want to be is, is you want to be an open-minded skeptic, okay? You don't want to be a closed-minded optimist where you're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, somebody said this, it must be true. Because there are a lot of people lying to you about a lot of shit. There are a lot of people lying to you because they want to sell you their shit, which is actually shit, okay? There are a lot of people like, oh, I did this and it occurred in six weeks with my master blaster thigh exercise program. And you're like, ha, sorry, uh, you lying, you lying to me. Don't be lying to me because I know what's true makes me lighter and the lie makes me heavier. And that was really freaking heavy. You're lying to me. So you want to be an open-minded skeptic, which is be willing to have any miraculousness show up, but always be the question of, is this actually true? Does this make me lighter that this is possible? See, and one of the things about all of the books that I have written that I am so grateful for is especially, see, for years, I would write lots of books, but not read other people's books because what would happen is, you know, what's true makes you lighter, a lie makes you heavier. I would read and read and read, and there would be light plus heavy, and then heavy, 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 light, heavy, light, heavy, 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 light, light, heavy, 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 light, heavy, 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 heavy. And I just stopped reading. I was like, I don't, I'm not getting lighter while I read this. And one of the things I noticed in reading through and doing one of the last audiobooks that I did, and being a body whispering will be coming out an audiobook. I will be reading it. And um, that will be coming. It's probably going to take a few months because it's coming out with a, a company that wanted to do that. But one of the things I noticed in reading it 
was everything in there is energetically congruent. Every single word, every single concept, every single construct. So if you read it just for what is energetic congruence and what is lightness, you read it for no other reason than that, other than to have an experience of something that is continuously energetically congruent. Whether it seems true for you or not at the moment is another story. Most of it will, and some of it you'll be like, ah, I got stuck. That's because there's this possibility that you've decided can't exist, and your mind is fighting to hold on to the limitation instead of opening up to and embracing the possibility. But if you just got it for an experience of, a hundred and some pages of energetic lightness and congruency, that alone changes your world because you start to recognize then when things aren't congruent. It's part of the reason that a lot of people who do access consciousness, they'll go to do something else that they used to do or used to read and they start going, wow, am I judging? Because I'm noticing all these places where it's not energetically congruent. No, you're not judging. You're just aware. Take the parts that work, leave the rest. Yeah. I... <laughs> I would love to, the way, everything you just talked about, there's a question that's earlier up a bit from Anne Aldan, Aldahi. Um, but when you're talking about the miracle, she's, and getting out of judgment and having this energetic congruence to change things. She says, if we function from interesting point of view and healing, can we give more in our sessions? I mean, how can we contribute more? And I just want to, that you you basically address that question, but it's such a, a great question in that so many of us, whether it's our own bodies we want to heal and change, or we work on other people in any sort of session. And yeah. truly the miraculousness, that interesting point of view opens up. It truly does. That is the space where miraculousness can occur because you're not aligning and agreeing with something being real. You're not aligning and agreeing with it being unchangeable. You're not aligning and agreeing that it's a problem. You're not aligning and agreeing that it's wrong and that the person is wrong, even if they are. And you're not resisting and reacting to the problem. You're not resisting and reacting to the fact that they chose it and trying to either make them wrong or right for choosing it. You're really at the space where the whispers can reach your awareness. And the whispers of what is actually going on, what is actually being communicated by this thing that's going on can make itself into your awareness and from there, it's like perceiving like this. It's like perceiving from quote unquote, a higher dimension, which in a sense it is in one way of speaking because you're more like three-dimensional or multi-dimensional. And this thing you're looking at is two-dimensional. And so you're able to see it from a different place. And really quick, if you if you could imagine you're, you're a three-dimensional creature, you have a three-dimensional body right now. Three-dimensional reality is what we understand. And so if you were a sphere as a three-dimensional being, uh, body, let's say, being and body, and you're looking at a two-dimensional reality, a two-dimensional reality would look like a piece of paper. And if you were to interact with that three-dimensional reality, number one, you could look above it and see it all. But as you were to interact with it, like walk through it, first, the people in two-dimensional reality would see a point. And as you, walk, as you went through it, it, they would see a circle that would get bigger and bigger and bigger until you got to the midpoint. And then as you kept going through it, it would get smaller and smaller and smaller, turn into a point and then disappear. And people in two dimensional reality would be like, oh my God, what was that? And one would go, oh, it was a point. And then one would go, no, it was a circle. It was this big. Another one would go, no, it was a circle that was this big. Another one would go, no, it was a circle that was this big. You know, So every one of them would have a different perspective depending on their point of view of where they viewed it. <clears throat> you happen to know that you were a sphere. None of those people are getting you. They're only seeing the part of you that matches their judgment of what reality is. That is what's going on with judgment. Okay. People are out there and they believe they see the entire reality because their reality is fundamentally two dimensional because that is exactly what judgment creates. Judgment takes you from having a sense of depth and space and puts you into a literal functioning as a two dimensional reality because the element of space is now gone. And what it creates is people that function from judgment believe they are right because that is all they're willing to perceive about what reality is. They're functioning from a two dimension. There's not three, a third dimension for them to perceive a different perspective and they assume they're right. And if you make the mistake of aligning and agreeing with their judgment or resisting and reacting to their judgment, 
what occurs is you now function from a two dimensional reality in that area, which is why your body feels stuck because you have eliminated the space. So allowance is the key. Allowance is the space beyond judgment. Allowance is where everything is an interesting point of view. And that is also where the space of question becomes possible for us. And the space of asking a question will lead to more awareness beyond two dimensional reality. Wow. I, you are so psychic. <laughs> I know we're at, we're at an hour. And the one other thing I wanted to ask you is you, you end the chapter with, um, we live in a like, time right now in human history. Like I'm going to read it because it's really beautiful. It's just short. At the time of writing, we're in an era of human history where a lot of citizens of the world are frustrated and angry with the politicians and policymakers who seem to rule the planet. As angry as you may be at certain political figures, if you really want to make a change in the world and step into your true power as a healer, the most effective step you can take is to let go of your judgments about those people. Remember, your judgment merely solidifies what is already there. Um, and because there were some questions about COVID earlier and their bodies getting bigger and changing. It's like all that judgment that we're aware of. And I love that you end that chapter in this thing of rather than also becoming two dimensional, if we didn't judge them and judge ourselves, what it, what it eat, like what that can change. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. And this is just the beginning, you know, this, this conversation, you know, we're doing it as a gift to you and to invite other possibilities into your lives. You know, there's some of you that are like, yes, I just want to change my body and in, in which the body whispering book or the course, the online one or the one that's coming up, if you've had foundation will dynamically add to that. There's some of you that are like, I want to change my whole freaking life. I want to become as conscious as I can. And we have that also. That is really what our target is in access, um, is to give you that space and that possibility. So we together can change things with a lot more ease, but also to create a sustainable living earth that sustains itself indefinitely. Yeah. Can you, since you have the controls, will you put up your website? <laughs> Because I do just oh, want to I have the control. I have the technology. Because on your website, you can find, if you don't already have the book, you can find where to get it. Like you said, it's coming as an audio version. You can also get an, the ebook version, like the PDF version. Um, you also have a class, a three day class coming up September 24th to 26th, Body Whispering. Three days online or live in Mexico. Um, there's an online course. So, and so, like, like you said, so much more on your website. You have hundreds and hundreds of YouTube videos. And we will be doing one more edition of the Body Whispering Book Club next Yay. week at the same time on being the question. <laughs> yes, I love it. Thank you so much, Dane. And thank you everyone ah, for being on. Thank you, Miss Emily. And that I wanna point again to where you talked about the body being that beautiful energy. I don't have the exact words, but the cat that. whiskers. Yeah, like cat it's whiskers, cute. but it's just doing its job from such a sweet, kind space. And if we can acknowledge that, we have such a different possibility available. And what if you, truly being you, with total communion with your body, with no need to judge, with a willingness to receive magic as your reality, and a willingness to be so different that this reality never owns and controls you, are the gift, the change, and the possibility this world requires. You are, and we cannot wait to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>